Hey, it's Will. I've got your third video here in our sequence of tutorial videos on creating a plugin project in Rack AFX 7. We've got a little volume plugin, uh, volume control plugin running here. I've got my blue Ableton volume knob and a on off switch for the mute switch, and I've got two LED meters. In this video, I'm going to be adding an option menu that is going to let the user uh, select the channel combination, either stereo, left, or right. And in the next video, or the next two videos, I'm going to add a new, very special control that's a preset, an internal preset control. I get, I get requests for this all the time. Um, we're going to go into that in the next video. So in this one, we're going to learn how to create an option menu and decode the value of that option menu. And then in the next video, we're going to do a very advanced version of the option menu. So let's go over here to the third slot in our row, and I'm going to choose option menu from the list after right-clicking. The name of this option menu is going to be channels. It's a string list type. That's the only kind we have. And the variable is going to be channels, like that. Now, a string list variable is the kind of variable where we present the user with a list of strings, and they pick one of them. In our case, we're going to have stereo left and right as our strings. You set the strings in this enumeration list box right here, and there is a list of all of the existing enumerations. If you want to use one of those, you can double click on it and pull that right up into the enum list. So there's no problem if you need to share the same enumeration list. For example, input filter, low pass, high pass, band pass. Output filter, low pass, high pass, band pass. They share the same set of strings. So this enumeration list is going to be stereo, uh, left, and right. Now, the string list is actually going to wind up being part of what's called a strongly typed enumeration. If you don't know what that is, um, get on the internet and look it up. We're going to go over that in, a, in a, few a few minutes. And because of that, we have to make sure that there are no white spaces anywhere in, in any of these strings. So you can see down here I've got switch off and switch on. There's actually an underscore. You can't see it because of the selection, but there's an underscore in between here. In ASPIC, in the ASPIC plugin core, when it encounters an underscore in one of these strings, it treats it as a white space. So you can make the string look very nice and pretty for the user by putting underscores wherever you want a white space to be. So I've got stereo left, right. I'm going to say OK. And my option menu is here. It's got stereo left and right, and stereo is the default value. Now, the biggest problem here is figuring out how to decode this. And we're going to go to the plugin core.h file, and you can see that RackAFX has written this variable channels. That is the, the bound variable that I put in, and it has also written a strongly typed enumeration called channels enum. The name of this variable is always going to be the same as the variable name plus the word enum tacked on the end of it. So the strongly typed enum here lists stereo left and right. The underlying data type inside of a strongly typed enum is an int. It would be really nice if we could just say if channels equals stereo, or if channels equals channels enum colon colon stereo. The problem is, even though the underlying data type is an enum, you're not allowed to do that in C++. You have to actually do a static cast to try to compare the two. So I've already written a function to do that. It's right over here. There's a comment that says, to compare, you write, if compare enum to int, channels, enum, colon, colon, stereo, etc. And this will compare the enumerated value here, stereo, to the channels variable, and it will return a true or a false depending on how that comparison works. There is a compare enum to int. There is a compare int to enum. So you can rearrange these arguments in whatever way makes the most sense for you. So in order to debug the channels, we're going to go into plugin core over here. We're now going to need to do a little bit more work. I've got this final volume. I'm going to change the name of this to final volume left. This is going to be the left output. And I'm going to cut and paste that and make a final volume right. And I'm setting them both up to have the same control as the knob. Now, if the user hits the mute button, then we're going to want both final volume left and final volume right to equal 0, 0.0. So now I've got final volume left, final volume right. I've got the mute function working here. We'll worry about fixing up the code down below in a, in a minute. The next thing we want to do is to decode that, uh, that channels enumeration. And 
set the final volume uh, of the left and the right channels depending on that. So for stereo, we're going to leave it alone. For left, we're going to set the right volume to zero. And for right channel only, we're going to set the left volume to zero. So to make that comparison, we're going to use the enumeration right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut and paste this little chunk of code. That's why I put it there. So feel free to cut and paste it. And what this says is if the channel's value equals stereo, then what do we do? The answer is right now we don't do anything. The way this logic is going to work, it's already set up for stereo right here. So if channel's enum colon colon left is the same thing as our channel's variable, then what we're going to want to do is take the final right volume here and set it equal to zero. So that will mute the right channel. And then the next thing we'll do is we will make the other comparison. So I'm going to cut and paste this code. And I'll say else if the channel's enumeration is right, like that, then we're going to want the left volume to be 0. There. And then the mute comes after that. So the mute logic supersedes everything. That button is the final one in the logic chain here. So set up the left and the right volumes, and then set one of them equal to 0 if the user has chosen the opposite one. And we need to now go ahead and, and write that out. So here is our left sample. So we're going to have final volume left, <coughs> excuse me, times the left audio input sample. And then over here, final volume left. And then here, this is going to be final volume right, because this is mono in, stereo out. And then we'll just cut and paste this. Here is final volume left and final volume right. So this now sets up the volume and mute and channel selection logic. I'll go ahead and let that start building right now. So uh, we can right click on compare enum to int and say peek at the definition. In this case, you can find the series of macros that I wrote already. So compare int to enum is here, compare enum to int is here, and then I have just enum to int, this is a static caster kind of a function right here that you can use. And finally, there's a last one called convert int to enum. And you can check the aspect documentation for how this particular function works. It's actually pretty specialized. So go ahead and check out that documentation and that sample project for that. We've succeeded over here, and I'm going to load the plugin, and we'll test it. So it is loaded, and I'm going to want to test the channels first. So. Now you can see that I have over here in the analyzer window in Rack AFX, I have a list of you pattern. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when the uh, when the channels are left right in their normal phase th that we're used to, you're going to see a diagonal slanted line, like a 45 degree angle line that moves up in this direction. And if I turn this on with stereo, you'll see that. So there it is. If one of the channels was out of phase by accident, that line would be going in the opposite. Uh, direction here, the, the other 45 degree angle direction. So w one of the things to notice is when I pulled up left and right, something very interesting happened here, which is you only saw the left and the right component of the Lishiju pattern. So there's just the left component for the X component, and there's the Y component for the other channel, and then there's both components. The Lishiju pattern generator in RackFX is a very powerful tool for checking phase coherence between your stereo channels, as well as for looking at envelopment. When you turn the reverb on, you're going to get a big circle of stuff inside of here. So that's the channels, and we've looked at the Lishiju pattern here, so we've gone over quite a bit of stuff. And we've also um, dealt with the, the logic of decoding this control. Now, in the next video, we're going to add a new preset control, and this is where things are going to become a little bit more complicated. So I will see you in that video.